Chapter 3, Part 2 At the next good harbor we found, we stopped to rest. At dawn, I armed myself with sword and spear and went to see if the island was inhabited. I climbed to a high point and could see smoke rising from a building in the wooded area below. I decided that it would be unwise for one person to investigate that house, so I returned to my ship. There, I divided my companions into two groups, one under the command of great-hearted Eurolocus and one under my command. We drew lots from a bronze helmet to see which group would investigate the house in the woods. Eurolocus drew the lot and set off with his 22 men. They were weeping with anxiety, which was no surprise given the experiences we had had so far on our journey. Soon they came to the gateway of a house built of polished stone, situated in a clearing in the middle of the forest. Mountain lions and wolves stood around the building. Instead of attacking Eurolocus and his men, they wagged their tails and licked the stranger's hands in a most friendly fashion, just as dogs fawn around their master when he returns from a meal, knowing that he, was brought, he has brought back chunks of food for them. So these lions and wolves fawned around my companions. Eurolocus and his men stood as still as death, their hearts filled with terror to have such ferocious beasts at their hands. Friends, listen, one of the men commanded. You can hear the lovely singing of some woman or goddess as she weaves. Let us call to her. When they called, the singer immediately opened her doors and invited them in. She was so beautiful and friendly that all the men foolishly joined her, except Eurolocus, who was more cautious. The captain watched and waited, but not one of the men reappeared. So he quickly returned to our swift black ship and tearfully told us what had happened. When he had finished, I quickly slung my bow across my chest, picked up my great bronze sword, and asked Eurolocus to lead me to the woman's house. Oh, do not make me return to that place, he pleaded. No one who goes there will ever leave. Instead, those of us who are still alive and free should leave this island as quickly as we can. I decided that it would be best after all to leave Eurolocus with my men at our hollow black ship and confront the woman myself. I was approaching the stone house when Hermes, the wayfinder, came toward me in the form of a young man. He shook my hand and said, Unlucky man, do you still wander alone through places you know nothing about? Where are you going this time? The feared goddess Circe lives in that house. She is the daughter of Helios, who gives light to men. But unlike her father, she is no friend to mortals. She likes to use evil drugs to transform the nature of beasts and men who walk the earth. Hermes continued, Fair-haired Circe has given your friends food, concealing a drug that has made them forget their homeland. The touch of her wand has transformed them into pigs, and she has confined them in styes. Your comrades now have the shape, appearance, and voice of swine, though their minds remain unchanged. They are inside that house now, locked in their pens, with the kind of food that swine enjoy, weeping at their misfortune. Have you come here to free them? Is that your hope? I assure you that unaided, you yourself would not return, for Circe would make a pig of you and confine you with your companions. Then Hermes said, I will protect you and save you from that fate. Take this powerful herb and follow my advice. Eat the drugged food Circe sets before you, for the herb I have given you will protect you from its power. Then, when the dread goddess touches you with her wand, draw your sword and act as if you intend to kill her. She will have such fear in her heart that she will be willing to swear a sacred oath by the immortal gods not to hurt you. With these words, he gave me the herb and returned to Mount Olympus. I continued on my way, 
became Dred Circe's guest and carefully followed the wayfinder's advice. When her magic did not affect me and I had thrust my sword upon her as if to slay her, Circe asked, Who are you and what city are you from? You must be Odysseus, the man of many schemes, who Hermes told me would come with his swift black ship on his return from Troy. I swear by the river Styx in the dark kingdom of Hades, the oath most sacred to all the deathless gods, that I will not harm you. Then the goddess treated me like a most honored guest, providing me with a bath, fresh clothing, and rich food. However, my heart was so filled with grief for the men who were captive in her pens that her food could not tempt me. If you wish me to eat, I advised her, you will have to free my companions and show me that they are well. Fair-haired Circe then picked up her wand, went over to the pig pen, and opened the gate. When the twenty-two pigs surrounded her, she touched each of them with another magical device. Instantly, each man resumed the, his human form, only he was now younger, taller, and much more handsome than he had been before. My companions sobbed with joy as they recognized me and realized they were free. When the goddess invited all of us to remain with her as her guests, I agreed. We pulled our swift, hollow ship into the land and placed our things in caves, as she advised. <clears throat> of the companions I had left behind at the ship, only Eurylochus spoke against my plan. Foolish men, think about where we are going, he exclaimed. Do you enjoy trouble so much that you want the dread goddess Circe to transform us into pigs or wolves <clears throat> or lions? so that we can protect her house? Odysseus is simply being reckless once again, as he was when he took us to the giant Cyclops cave. Because of that foolish venture, some among us were killed. <clears throat> when I heard those words, I was minded to draw my long sword and separate Eurylochus's head from his body. But my companions soothed my anger they suggested leaving him behind to watch over our ship and our possessions, but he chose not to anger me further and came along with us. The seasons of a full year came and went while we enjoyed an easy life with Circe. Finally, my companions came to me and said, Strange man, have you forgotten your homeland? If it is indeed your fate to return to Ithaca and your high-roofed home, it is time to leave this goddess. Circe was indeed willing to send us home. Odysseus, man of many schemes, she began. I shall not force you to be a guest in my house against your will. But before I can send you homeward, you must enter the kingdom of Hades and speak with the shade of the blind prophet, Teresius. The north wind will guide your swift ship, but once you have crossed the stream of Oceanus, you must beach your ship upon the dark shore and enter the underworld alone. At the rock where two rivers flow into the third, dig a pit and honor the dead by pouring it into the first milk and honey, then wine and finally water. After your prayers, sacrifice a ram and a black ewe. Turn their heads toward the dark place of the dead, but you yourself must turn your back and face the rivers instead. Then, Circe counseled, many shades of those who have died will approach you. Use your sword to keep them from drinking the blood of your sacrifice until Teresius has spoken to you. He will warn you of the troubles ahead of you and how to deal with them. <clears throat> 